All right, all right, all right. What is up? Good morning. We are in uh, Thessaloniki from one day to another day. The weather changed like day to night. And now we finally are feeling the winter. It's raining and uh, it's also cold at the same time. And in this day, I am so energized and I am out and about to make a video for you guys. Yeah. I'm going to leave uh, a link in the description to the location where I am parked. There are a few more campers as well. So if you are someone who is camping and traveling in his car, this is a very good location, quiet place, next to coffee shop, next to the supermarket. And uh, yeah, very proper place. Yeah. So I will leave the link in the description so you can uh, look it up yourself. And over there, the building that you see, that's like the main uh, concert hall. It's like a really big one in Thessaloniki, that the concert hall. I personally like this morning walks. I find them very relaxing for myself. I don't know what you think. I don't know if I can go through this narrow path with my umbrella. I don't want to 
damage my umbrella. Now we are getting close to civilization. We have a church here. Very nice architecture. It is not like that Thessaloniki doesn't have enough space for parking, but the amount of cars that I see here, it's like beating Athens in measures by four. There is enough space for parking, but it is all full and it is all the time full. Yeah, too many cars. Good morning again. Yesterday it never stopped raining and it got cold and I couldn't continue filming. And now it's been snowing on the mountains. I can see snow finally after Christmas and after New Year. Now, now finally it is for me Christmas and it's finally a new year that I can feel. It is chilly, it is cold. It's uh, two degrees right now, two degrees Celsius. And this parking area you can see in the background over there, two campers are parked uh, and that's where I'm also parked. Really nice place, really quiet place. If you are somebody who is traveling uh, in Greece and looking and hunting for places to stay, of course there are applications, but this is actually like you can see somebody is telling you how they feel about this area. It's a nice place, yeah. So. Yesterday I was at that church where I stopped filming so now I will walk to that church and from there we are gonna start back our walk and walk towards uh, the center of uh, Thessaloniki and we will see what we can uh, explore, what we can, what we can discover. Yeah, for me Thessaloniki is a, a completely new city, I, I don't know too much about it but uh, I see here and there some really like uh, rich architecture and it's a very modern and, and chic uh, place. Yeah, Thessaloniki is nice and uh, boy it is chilly. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Today it is the 9th of January 2024 and the time right now is uh, about 8 o'clock, yeah. No, no, not even 8, it is 7, 7.40, 7.45, something like that because the sun is not, uh, the sunrise, it's not sunrise yet, <laughs> it's early.
I should mention this area is quite sporty. We have tennis uh, playing ground here. Uh, there is a school uh, that they teach you how to do this kind of like there are two people sitting in the boat and then they are going so fast by doing this. There is that school and then there is the swimming pool, also swimming school. This, this particular area is very sporty and yeah, Thessaloniki feels like a, like a good city to me. Yeah, if you are planning on uh, living in Greece and if you are somebody who wants to live in a city where they have access to various services such as uh, sport, education, all of that stuff, then Thessaloniki is uh, a very good option. And here in Thessaloniki, you will, it's, it's more likely to find people, uh, those who speak uh, absolutely fluently English. And uh, that also tells a little bit about the, the whole vibe that uh, everybody is open to learn and everybody is, uh, and, and there are schools that you can put your kids to learn other languages. Yeah, I've noticed that some, some of them here and there uh, writing, advertising. Yeah. Other than that, I need gloves. It is cold. I guess till this day I was, I was still in the warm hug of uh, Greece. And nice, warm, although it was getting cloudy, but I never felt like that, that, that dry cold. Yeah, and today I'm feeling it. So yesterday we were exactly at this spot, this church. And right next to the church, this is a public parking. I checked it uh, in the map, in Google map. So this is a public parking area and that's the church. Eros Naos Ayofoti to Megalo. And as we will keep walking on this path, not at the seafront, it is the seafront side, but it is like the back street, we are gonna notice some really cool buildings, churches uh, along this path. And imagine yourself living in one of these apartments. Come on, the church in front of you, this area, the parking park area in front of you. And over there, just right behind those buildings is the sea.
I guess I'm walking a little bit fast. It's, it's just because to keep myself warm. And if you would go like uh, in or in explore these streets, you will always find uh, restaurants like there is over there Chinese food, sushi, and everything. You will always find uh, restaurants, coffee shops, just like that's the seafront side, and then there is one road, and then behind the road, there are all these restaurants. Yeah, it it just continues and. So well, I guess Thessaloniki is uh, quite a foodie city to to begin with. I haven't, I have seen foreigners uh, that they kind of live here. They don't seem like they are here just for uh, a visit. Of course, there are they, they, the possibility is there. There are people that they are here just for a visit and they were here for Christmas or to be with friends. But I have also noticed foreigners uh, speaking various different languages, English, Russian, uh, and uh, yeah, I guess that's, those are two uh, like main languages that I noticed. And they seem they are dressed like they are living already here. Yeah. So, yeah, Thessaloniki is home for for a lot of people, yeah. including these birds. <laughs> I'm not going to keep you all the time here at this uh, like not seaside because it can pretty easily get boring. I will take you to the seafront side as it is morning. It has its own unique vibe in the early morning. The other night uh, when I came uh, back from making the video of Thessaloniki, I made that one with a camera and uh, of course all the videos are made <laughs> with the camera but that one with a little bit of better camera with a lens and everything. So then I ordered food from here. <laughs> you know what happened? Uh, they, I ordered like tzatziki but they put tzatziki in a in a plastic box, but the plastic box was within a paper uh, cover, like in a paper bag. And I thought uh, mostly in a paper bag, they, they send you uh, bread. Without me opening the, the paper bag, I called them like, hey dude, you forgot to send me tzatziki. And they were super nice, super nice. They were like, so sorry. So it's it's happening while I haven't even checked what is in that uh, in that paper bag, assuming that it is bread, okay? Because in Crete you order or you don't order with food, they will send you bread within the paper bag. So I assume that this is bread, and I kind of touched it, moving it around, but it was still like jajik in that, and they were super nice. Like I was like, sorry, we forgot it, and come on, I would. After when I, uh, they said like, okay, we, this was our mistake. What else we can send you with your zajiki uh, as a as a kind of gift 
so we forgot and we kind of destroyed your taste and i was like no thank you so much and i feel like how nicely they were assisting and i was like no thank you so much and just send me the tzatziki and when they brought the tzatziki it was the same package and i look at the delivery guy and i didn't say anything and then i checked like and now i had two tzatziki <laughs> i felt so bad i felt really really bad and i was like mm, yeah we should be not assuming things <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it was funny. It kind of made me laugh a little bit on myself. Yeah, so that was a nice accident in, in Thessaloniki. It's a beautiful city. I mean, like, look at this. In the mornings, you will, you will get to have this entire path to run, to cycle, and to come here for fishing. I mean, come on. And that's the, uh, the concert hall. It's like the main concert hall of uh, Thessaloniki. It seems really nice. It's, it's, it's really, really huge. Yeah, standing here, you can, I can see the scale. Like it can fit easily more than thousands of people. Yeah. Yeah, so Thessaloniki is a very, very beautiful city and I'm pretty sure it's one visit is not enough. You, you need at least uh, quite some days, comfortable place to get out and check on the... Like, I couldn't find, found like anything specific to be able to check like and hunt some of the places. Uh, that could have been a little bit organized, but if you do some digging in the internet and then maybe i don't know TripAdvisor or on some facebook groups ask people they will have nice and good suggestion i i i could have done that but as i am in the move so i cannot really spend lots of time and for me it is just getting into the city and just feeling it it's much more for me about the people and about the vibe of like the living soul of the city other of course, it's always, uh, it's about a mix of everything, but in the first, how I feel about a place, yeah, Thessaloniki is, I guess, very welcoming and it's a very beautiful city. It's good for living, it's good for just visiting. Uh, yeah, it is not as touristic, I guess, as Athens, but come on, if you visit Thessaloniki once, in a lifetime and you walk the path that I'm walking right now, you will be like, damn, why I haven't been here? And then on some special occasions, you might take a friend or family to Thessaloniki to, to just enjoy a walk with them in this area and to take them to eat something, yeah. And please let me know if I'm talking too much and, and I'm over explaining things. <laughs> if I then then let me know. <laughs> yeah. And this right here is the bike lane. Like you can the these bikers they 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 bike here so we're supposed to be not walking in here you see some of these two wheels are boosted and they are so so fast even faster than a car if you get hit by one of these it can it can cut you split <laughs> in the middle <laughs> yeah I think we should go back towards the, like, away from the street, uh, away from the seaside, it is cold. And if, if I will pay attention if I have any shops open that I notice they sell gloves. I need to buy gloves because my hands are 
dead cold. Yeah. Like I said previously, lots of space, lots of parking space, but it is always full because of the amount of cars that they are here. And it's, like, it's not like there, there, you will always find free parking place around the coastline, but it is so full that, yeah, that it is too many cars, <laughs> I guess, yeah. I should also mention the positives, but right in front of your building, your house, you have many uh, park areas like this, which is a must, which is a must have for uh, city life. And then, and, and they have it. And now we are like almost in the rush hour. Everybody is running towards their jobs and the city is getting fuller with the cars. Yeah. And again here on the right side, this very nice green park. Look at it. I guess inside there we have like a dog park as well. It's, it's kind of closed. These trees in the right side, these are called uh, we have also this one growing uh, in our country and they get so tall and we will have like forms of the, these trees and then we will like uh, whenever they are at a certain like uh, if they are uh, how like they are strong enough and uh, then what we do we cut them and we use them to cover the roofs of the house and that's this particular uh, kind of tree, yeah. They are lightweight and they are uh, quite strong. Not like that strong, but what it does is, because it is very lightweight, it takes the weight from the roof, yeah. So that's natural material we use to cover the roofs, yeah.
I was thinking in the past that in Afghanistan we have one of the most diverse climates of uh, any given country. We have like desert like Sahara where you can grow literally uh, dates and we have uh, an area which is like in on the sea level where we grow olives, we grow like oranges, we grow bananas, it's in the so in the border with Pakistan and then we have like uh, another city it's called Wardak uh, and in that city we grow apples some of the best apples in the world are grown, growing in that city and then we have Kandahar and that's like more towards the border of Iran that's where they have the like the the the, the pomegranates from that city is not eating just maybe the owner of the the farm is eating it and then it's being picked by very soft hands and put in the boxes that they are more expensive than my car and they are being shipped to Saudi Arabia to Qatar to these uh, like sheikhs that they are like the richest people in the world so that city can produce some of the finest pomegranates in the world like Kandahar and the name Kandahar comes from like Alexander uh, I talk I talk about this with some of my Greek friends why a city in Afghanistan would be Kandahar and that was uh, it was Alexandria like uh, Alexandropolis in uh, <coughs> Turkey and Alexandria in uh, the very last city in uh, after like Kavala Alexandria the city in uh, Greece and then Kandahar Alexandria it was also uh, it was like when the Alexander the Great came to Afghanistan and he was in Kandahar so I don't know what was the name of the city before but uh, it was called Alexandria and then what they did they cut the Alex and then they lit the uh, uh, Kan Kandahar Alexander so they cut the Alex and then it became Kandahar. So yeah, that's a little bit insight to the name of that city. That city has entire uh, Greek architecture, civilization uh, uh, living in the heart of it. It's, it's there, you can search it in the Google, you can look it up in the Google Maps that there is an entire uh, Greek city uh, ex that exists in uh, in the Kandahar in the Af in Afghanistan the at the how well, at the south yeah at the south west I, I should say side of uh, Afghanistan yeah it's it's the city is called Kandahar and here as I mentioned we have various beautiful uh, buildings it says national Bank of Greece Cultural Foundation. Yeah. I truly, truly like and love the architecture of buildings like this. Very transportive. It feels to me like you can step into this house and then a, a, a magical uh, fairy tale will begin. Wow, come on. If just for the sake of these beautiful buildings, uh, you, can, you can visit uh, Thessaloniki. If that's something you're uh, up for, like fairy tales beautiful beautiful architecture yeah all of that stuff
I noticed uh, some Christmas trees are falling on the street and uh, I was, if I was the tree, what I will be thinking, I will be like, first you cut me from the place where I am, so I cannot grow. I'm in pain in the first place. And then you put me in your house, you let me with the lights and I make you happy. So at least I am happy as a tree that I have a good reason to keep few, to make some people happy. And now the Christmas is gone. You are throwing me back on the side of street where nobody cares anymore about me. That's very depressing. If I was the tree, I would be really depressed about what's happening to me. Yeah. <laughs> if you, if you, if you really, I think, if you really like Christmas and if you really like the Christmas vibe, why don't you grow your own tree and as a little tree, lit it uh, that year and then next year it will be a little bit bigger and then the year after it will be a little bit bigger and keep that tree for as long as you can and then you, when it, it is not, when it cannot fit in your house, then take it to the forest, plant it somewhere. Why, why in the hill we are cutting millions of trees for the sake of celebrating Christmas or get a plastic tree which is I also not a good one at least but it is better than cutting an original tree yeah we are ridiculously <laughs> cute when it comes to decision making as human species and human race What I truly, truly admire about uh, Thessaloniki, they have made some really, really good choices uh, by leaving such uh, significant uh, real estate for the parks and for greenery. And that gives this city a really beautiful character to it. Even if you if you go like uh, towards that direction, you will still find uh, some more uh, space that it's be it's been uh, kept green, and that's 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 something that's something. Yeah, I really admire the brain of the person who designed the city. There is one downside to this entire walking seafront side path that I haven't noticed any public toilets. If you were walking for a complete hour and if you were drinking coffee or if you were drinking water, 
so it get, it it gets a little bit difficult on uh, to 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 go to I mean to kind of let that fluid out and I haven't noticed any uh, public toilets that they are in uh, action so you can go and uh, be relieved so your option is to ask a coffee shop if you could use their toilet or if you were being nice and polite then <laughs> overdose yourself with coffee <laughs> go ask for another one <laughs> and then you will be hyper <laughs> yeah so that's that's the flaw in the design i think even if there were toilets and there were paid ones it would have been worth it to have them because if you were really in the in need and if you were willing to pay 50 cents or a euro for the use of the toilet that explains that you are going to also behave nice in the toilet and not, and not kind of use the flip mentality <laughs> but anyways as we are uh, walking towards the center we are getting closer to more coffee shops and more restaurants which is a nice thing At certain point, if I could uh, cross the street, if there was any zebra, then I'm gonna go back to the seafront side to uh, to show you and to also kind of have spend a few seconds at the seafront side. I'm getting tired of too many buildings. good that I walked here I really wanted to show you this one too I mean look at this building It doesn't seem like a little house, it seems and sounds like a castle, yeah. Really nice design. If you look at the, like the roof from beneath, from the balcony, even the roof has its own unique design to it. I mean, come on, it's beautiful. Maybe let's just walk a little bit, a few more blocks towards the center. Yeah. We will see if there is, if there are more of these buildings.
Oh, look at that church. I've had a moment to think about why they are making monasteries too far from civilization. They are in the quietest and the most uh, beautiful places. Then uh, for a moment I found like a, a, like, a, like a fragment of moment that to just be present. And then again, my, attentions, my attention was um, split it to listen to the sound of the cars to the horn and to the, the, the this ambience noise of the city which some people like and some people are used to but have you asked yourself ever that what is it like to not be in this ambience to to just to be in absolute silence of course i know some people they are freaking out when they when they first time experience absolute silence because they were born in noise they lived in noise and absolute silence is very rare to feel these days in in the city life but believe me if somehow you could allow yourself to put all of your attention and be in a place where you can concentrate on one thing and if that's a matter or if that's that's your life or that's a a relationship or whatever it is if you could just concentrate concentrate in one single thing at the moment at a, at a given moment believe me you will get to the bottom of that problem and you will not have uh, uh, split uh, decisions and, and, and ideas what to do uh, with with life you will be uh, you will absolutely know what to do and you will be certain and that certainty whenever you are certain that brings peace calmness and happiness even if you if like you will be like what if i am so certain and then the outcome is negative is it okay to be uncertain and all the time feel the ancient to be ancient and to have feel anxiety or it's better to be uh, like certain don't feel any anxiety and just uh, face the outcome and whatever it is and, and, and 
then be optimistic about the outcome. I should be teaching myself how to be certain. Most of the time I'm certain the decisions that I make, I'm like dead serious. Like I called the person like, you don't have any tzatziki. And I was, the outcome was quite funny because I was left with two boxes of tzatziki, which one I ate at the night time, and the second box I kept and I eat it as breakfast in the morning. <laughs> so being certain and confident can lead up to some <laughs> benefits. <laughs> the tzatziki cost me three euros. <laughs> Come on, look at this beautiful church. That was really, really beautiful to be inside that church, to be completely, you know, these, um, the, there is a dimension. There is something about being in a place, in a building where you can feel the separation from the materialism, from the material world, and you get connected to the spiritual world. world. If you pay close attention, the moment you step into one of these spiritual buildings, I don't care if it is uh, a synagogue or it is a church or if it's a mosque uh, or if it's a mandir or if it's a temple, all of these buildings where the spiritual uh, practices are uh, being practiced, and these, uh, the, uh, the spiritual, ritual, spiritual rituals are being practiced, if you walk into any of them, you will uh, be connected to a different force, to a different energy, which I absolutely respect and I absolutely want people to feel something like that because it's important for, for, for our being, for, for us to feel something different other than materials because materialism is very toxic. You, you give it, and then stepping into this church, it, it kind of teleported me into a world that I could forget for a moment about what's wrong and what's right in the world, yeah. So keep doing these things time to time, it's good. And here we have a memorial. Isn't it a great question? Some people are uh, holding and are carrying bodyguards around 
to, to be safe. And in the first place, if you ask why the person who is walking like on the street, why he doesn't require a bodyguard? Because he is living a lifestyle which is common and which is quite basic as everybody else. And he doesn't carry more than that he should be carrying. It's like a natural law of uh, uh, like world. If you are holding on to things that is more than that you're supposed to have, the, the, like naturally nature and universe will find its way to take it from you in the various forms. It could be like nature can give you diseases and that's how you're gonna spend it or in a, you can have like losses in business. So as much as you carry, the heavier li uh, life gets and becomes. It's much, much beautiful to carry less, be minimalistic and, and enjoy the life in the giving moments and be present. Yeah, and be grateful for what you have, which I am so grateful for what I have in life. And uh, that little that I have when I am, whenever I am able to share with the little that I have, it makes me feel absolutely like I'm, I'm, I'm so happy. Yeah. So let me show you this church over here. And churches like this, we have uh, all over the path walking towards the center of uh, Thessaloniki. And I'm happy that it's not being conquered with these, by these big uh, companies and industrial uh, giants that they destroy these uh, places and then they build something uh, ugly. <laughs> yeah, that's good to have them. Like you have a very nice the transition between these new buildings uh, and then these old buildings. I prefer the old buildings. Okay, now we have a zebra here. I will wait for the light to get green and then I will cross. Of course, I'm not gonna <laughs> cross it now it's it's quite deadly or there or no cars maybe I should I don't suggest this for anybody else There are two tents over there. Somebody is camping in the park. It's not that I'm against camping because I'm myself, I might have to do it sometime, but the one thing, I have only one suggestion. Uh, if somebody is panking, uh, camping in a park, in a public park, just do your thing, but be uh, discreet or don't throw garbage. Just camp spend your night, feel comfortable, save the money that you need to save, but keep it together, keep it nice, keep it like nothing is happening, keep it silent. I like things, I like 
like I don't want you to kick out, I don't want anybody to be kicked out of a park, but I also don't want like the rest of the people to feel uncomfortable walking around and seeing this thing uh, just standing uh, till 11 or 12 in the in the morning. That's also not nice. Come on, put your camp together about 11 or 12 and then when it is sunrise time, put it together. Go grab a coffee or, or come on, like man, you gotta be smart. There is always a little bit of room for everybody to do things that they are in the circle of law. And if there is a little bit overlap in between, which is also not we are not hurting anybody, it's okay. But do it in a way that is acceptable. Yeah. So now we are back at the waterfront and the seafront side of Thessaloniki, the, the beautiful city and uh, we are walking towards the umbrellas which is not too far from me it's about uh, 100 meters and then from there we are going to be walking towards the white tower which is in itself a living beauty i don't know anything about the history of the white tower please somebody educate me about it and then we will see what else we can explore because thessaloniki uh, I'm, I'm so new here yeah yeah and i don't have any friends here at all so, and I'm not a big fan of browsing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sometimes I am when I need that other gadget for my work. <laughs> then I browse everything and I watch every YouTube video on it. Yeah, to make my decision. But in, if I have free time, then I play music. I I chat with people, call people, or. I, I find people, those who are there, and I go start a conversation with them. I just ask them stupid questions. <laughs> yeah, it's so fun. <laughs> just go somebody who is fishing, ask him, Oh man, you are you fishing? Yeah, I'm fishing. Okay, so how many fish you caught? And they will be like, what? I haven't caught any yet. Do you think you're going to caught any fishes, any fish today? He'll be like, nah, maybe. What What is like the... the one, what is the day that you remember you've caught the most fish and they will be like oh, there was this one day that I caught like 10 fish oh you will be like really which fish they were <laughs> and then you can just keep going <laughs> <laughs> yeah so ask them about people about their life about the things that they do they always they are always interested to answer yeah I will teach you a little trick that will make your day completely bulletproof. Whenever you wake up and you want to start the day, just make a little uh, chat with yourself. Say, hey, today it's a beautiful day and I want, it, I want to get certain things done, but things can go wrong. That things can go really, really uh, north. And, but I am ready to face any challenge. I know that there will be somebody that today is going to piss me off while I'm driving. I already know that there will be somebody, but I am ready to face it. I am I'm ready to be not bothered by it. Because believe me, it's okay to be optimistic and live that in that in that beautiful bubble, in that beautiful sunshine and this gloomy world. Like every day you wake up, you you you, you grab your cup of tea, you drink it like this, and then you assume like this is gonna be a perfect day. Nobody is gonna bother me. Nobody is gonna fuck with me. And then what do you do? You go, and then the first thing happens. Somebody like bam, 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 and kind of uh, gets you out of your. Um, 
your safe zone and the idea you have about the world like oh this is a nice cozy place nothing is gonna go wrong no be ready at the very beginning of the morning that i am ready for an absolute blessing today but i'm also ready any challenge that they can bring i'm gonna face it with stability and i'm gonna face it with lots of confidence and with lots of patience that's how you gonna if you start your day with that mentality things not easily can bother you unless there is like an actual real danger facing you like fear like people behaving unpolite or uh, traffic uh, being not nice the, those things they will not be anymore to to bother you but make the promise in the very early morning that you are absolutely ready and open for an absolute nice and uh, blessed day but if there are challenges that they are uh, faced towards you and they are going to come you are gonna face them and you are gonna defeat them with stability yeah and, and have some expectations always leave a little bit of uh, uh, space open for things can go wrong yeah and then you will be not disappointed so your expectations should be balanced there you go a piece of philosophy <laughs> I should not forget to mention that right next to this uh, seafront site we have this glorious hotel and beneath it we have this restaurant like a round glassy restaurant where you can eat and uh, every now and then there are these spots where you can go for uh, a drink or you can grab uh, I don't think it will be like a grab area thing but I, I am pretty sure you can sit and eat but I personally prefer to grab my coffee and just come here maybe go over there sit drink my coffee or just hold it walking next to somebody and, and, and have a chat yeah and talk about things that they are not boring <laughs> or, or, or listen or listen to the peop the person that you are with yeah listen to them be interested in their life yeah i guess that's that's that makes a good bond and pay attention and if they are not interested in your life and if they are not absolutely not asking you how you are doing then that's not a good match <laughs> when 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 you when you when you when you are like done the walk they never answer their messages <laughs> And over there we have the very famous shining moon of Thessaloniki in the sea. And then there is a bird sitting on it. A seagull. Is it a seagull? And this thing at night time has its light and it looks really, really beautiful on a calm night when it, the sea is calm. The reflection of this moon is so, so beautiful on the sea. 
And what else is beautiful? The sun shining. It, it looks warm, but it is not. <laughs> it is cold. <laughs> Oh, I see now in the daytime, uh, there is like a castle over there up and then there is a wall f coming down from the hill towards the sea. And I can see the same white bridge which is over there on the sea. I can see one, one another up there, like just beneath the castle. So it seems like this uh, tower here, the white tower is, uh, I hope I wasn't saying bridge all the time. No, the tower. Yeah, so the tower is, uh, the white tower is the one of the pieces from the wall which is there. And yet I don't have any idea or in what era it was made, by whom it was made. I don't know if it's like uh, historically, I don't know anything about it, yeah. But they, they, they seem like cool structures, architecture, yeah doesn't matter. I don't care who built it. Anybody who built it, it looks nice. And there you go, you have these famous umbrellas of Thessaloniki just for the sake of <laughs> what I don't know. It's culture, I need to touch one of it. There you go. <laughs> yeah, we made it. <laughs> My hands are cold, really, really cold. I think I'm gonna cut the video here. I'm gonna see if I can find any coffee shops to grab a warm coffee and uh, then I will continue the video, okay?
boy, this sun feels so good on, <laughs> on, on my face. <laughs> I really don't have any idea what that building is, but if it's a restaurant, I won't choose, I will not choose to eat there because it is filled with antennas and they all produce lots of frequencies, which is not good for our uh, DNA and RNA. I will not choose to <laughs> eat there. <laughs> yeah, I rather eat somewhere <laughs> around the sea. <laughs> Much better. Yeah, good, good. Uh, what is there? Is something from the sea that we breathe, and it's so good for our brain. <laughs> with a little brain, with a little brain that I have left, I choose to, I choose to on the coastline. <laughs> I am quite convinced that that's not a restaurant. I don't think that's a restaurant. <laughs> that, that is anything but a restaurant. <laughs> yeah. So if you can see over there, that's the castle over there. And I don't know if you can see. And it's kind of far for, for me to walk there. I see very beautiful buildings. Yeah. And I'm, 
And I'm quite convinced that this uh, White House of Thessaloniki is kind of the continuation of that wall, I guess. I don't know if you can see, but over there, yeah. Anyways, that's for the next time as it's too far to go there. Uh, I will I will leave it for another time, but for the moment I will show you this building over here. <laughs> If I was a salesperson, I would have been a lazy one. I will, sh I, I will tell you like, oh, there is up on the hill, there is a very nice house. It's, it's really nice and it's, it's, it's affordable and it kind of matches your choices. But today it's rainy, I cannot take you there. <laughs> what a salesperson. <laughs> That's, that is, that's who I am. I will tell you all about it, but I'm not gonna take you and I'm not gonna sell you the house. <laughs> because we are not selling here, huh? Are we? Before we get to the White Tower, I just noticed over there, it's a building and the trees are growing out of the building. I find it quite interesting to show you. It's like a little hobbit house. Oops. And look at that. And here, right at the park, we have this Taverna coffee shop area. And now we are walking right into the White Tower of Thessaloniki. Aristotelian. Maybe it's a theater. Maybe 
It's a cinema. We safely executed crossing the street. <laughs> now we are right beneath the white tower. I don't know if there are any restriction on touching it. <laughs> let's let's just touch it and make it make it. Oh, look at this! We touched the white tower of Thessaloniki. <laughs> let's put him in prison because he just touched. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. All right, so yeah, this is the White Tower and those were some uh, nice buildings and a church and then here and there. It's just a city like every other city in the world with its own uh, like character, with its own build, with its own people and with its own culture. Okay, what are my thoughts? Overall, it's a beautiful city and I can recommend this for living. I can recommend this for a visit i can recommend this for a night out and i'm pretty sure you're gonna have a a good time it, although at the seafront side at this like very path that we are walking and if we go a little bit further it it is a bit it's a bit pricey because of course it should be and then this is like the the top of the top of the the cherry so it's a bit pricey, but that's not a problem for once or twice to be uh, gifting yourself with something a little bit pricey. And uh, if I think about like a summer vacation place, of course, it would be nice to have like a pass through uh, this city, but I don't see any significant uh, beaches or anything that that kind of wows me that kind of ah, that's yeah so uh, beach wise i'm not so sure even if there was like a beach right next to the city i would i will not choose to swim there why why i, I beach means to me relaxation beach means to me 
some privacy, some some time for myself, with my family, with my friends, yeah. So I will not waste the beach day on next to a city or next to a harbor, no, that's not what I will do. And uh, other than that, it's a nice city, nice walk. You can run here in the morning, you can bike here, all of that stuff. But I personally, wouldn't choose to live in this city. I still uh, prefer uh, Heraklion for myself to be living because it's kind of special, huh? Yeah, of course. Am I going to visit Thessaloniki again? Of course, I will visit Thessaloniki. Maybe uh, to, to visit a friend or to be here with family and friends. Of course, I will do that. Yeah, if I am driving through Greece, of course I will. I will give it a stay. Yeah. Other than that, quite beautiful city, magnificent city, uh, absolutely worth uh, a visit. Absolutely worth trying the food. Yeah. So this was it for Thessaloniki. Over there, there is Starbucks and uh, I'm gonna grab my coffee from Starbucks as they have the milk without lactose i'm i cannot tolerate lactose so i need uh, lactose free that's why i choose um, sometimes places where i choose to grab my coffee because i cannot drink any milk yeah uh, so don't say like hey look at him he starts sporting starbucks no they have uh, lactose free milk and if you would suggest soy milk or uh, almond milk i have also reactions to those things as well so lactose free milk here yeah it's nice place i'm gonna i hope you like the video i hope you like the night video if you haven't watched that uh, then go find it in the channel watch the night video of thessaloniki uh, and uh, yeah this was it hope you liked it uh, then give it a thumbs up share your thoughts recommendations please correct me if i'm wrong about certain things uh, in the comment section and if you want to support the channel support me uh, my paypal account link and patreon account link in the description and if you are already having a good time and being entertained and uh, finding value in these videos then consider subscribing other than that until the next time peace